Hello, let's begin. Welcome everyone and good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're watching from. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ji Bin Liu from Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Host Professor Cui Li Gang in Beijing from Beijing University Third Hospital and myself will host today's international webinar on ultrasound applications for the COVID-19 pandemic, which is broadcasting from China to the world. As you all know, the current coronavirus pandemic has become serious global crisis. There are currently more than 600,000 people infected worldwide. And this number continues to increase day by day. At this critical moment, we have invited Chinese ultrasound physicians and experts who has fight this disease from the front lines to launch a global online seminar to share their experience and the knowledge using ultrasound to combat COVID-19. I hope that their experience may help others around the world who are facing the challenges of a such unexpected outbreak. This pandemic is a disease with all the borders that will request us to work together to overcome. Collaboration and communication within global medical com community are critical to finding solutions to the many unanswered questions. This webinar is organized by Medical Ultrasound Equipment Society of the CAME, the Journal of AUDT, and the Shanghai Engineering Research Center for Ultrasound Diagnosis and Treatment at Chongji University. This is also sponsored by Jefferson Ultrasound Institute, Intelius, ARDMS, and Shenzhen Visonics Medical Technology. We want to take this opportunity to thank Professor Yu Xin, Professor Wang Jinrui, Professor Qian Linxue, and Mr. Yi Yong, Mr. Dale Sear, and also my colleagues at Jefferson, Professor Levin Azarin and Professor Fleming Forsberg for their efforts and support. Now I would like to introduce my co-host, Professor Cui Li Gang in Beijing to moderate the following program. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm Cui Li Gang from Peking University Third Hospital. I wish to thank all invited ultrasound experts to deliver lectures on this webinar and all participates from many countries around the world to join this online broadcasting. We would like to note that due to time limitations, we are not able to have Q&A sessions during this webinar. Thank you for your understanding. Without further ado, I want to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Xie Mingxing, Professor and Director, Department of Ultrasound affiliated Union Hospital to Tongdi Medical College in Wuhan. The Wuhan Union Hospital and its, and its two branch hospitals are medical centers that are designated to admit the most severe and critical cases during the crisis. Dr. Xie and his team have been actively working on the front lines of his hospitals since the initial outbreak of COVID-19. The title of his lectures is Application of Bedside Ultrasound in Management of COVID-19 Patients. Let's welcome Dr. Xie.
Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Ning Xinxie, coming from the Department of Art Sound, the uh, Tongji Medical College, uh, Wuhan, China. Uh, okay. My English pronunciation is not good, but I will try my best to uh, present my lecture in English. So I hope everyone can, uh, can be tolerant. Until now, uh, our team has been fighting uh, in the battle of this pandemic more than two months. And we have, uh, and we have got some experience during this period. I would like to thank, here thank Professor Liu and Professor Ru Xin for giving me this opportunity to share my experience on the application of bedside uh, ultrasound in management of COVID-19 patients. Uh, my my topic uh, is uh, beside ultrasound used for management in patients uh, with uh, COVID-19. Uh, this is, uh, uh, is a part of the content from the uh, seventh trial version of uh, COVID-19 diagnosis and treatment plan uh, issued by uh, National Health Commission, China. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, what auto uh, autopsy and COVID-19 have found. The uh, autopsy uh, of COVID-19 cases are summarized as above. As you can see uh, in this slide, different organs and the tissues are attacked by the virus, which uh, result in necrosis of lungs, spleens, heart, liver, kidney, and uh, so on. The uh, criteria of severe and the critical patients in, uh, in the seventh edition uh, are, defined, are defined as above. One of the main aim of antivirus uh, combat is, uh, is to improve the success rate to cure these severe and uh, critically ill patients. The artery sound doctor in our department has examined a lot of such patients. These are the videos and the photos our uh, working staff wearing in uh, sufficient in the PPE and the bed sound other sound device in uh, intensive care uh, unit. Uh, this is a, a research uh, uh, made by Professor Chao Ning Huang. Uh, published on, on the 9th and in January. As you can see, COVID-19 patients progress uh, rapidly and the uh, median duration of onset to ARDS is, on, is only uh, nine days and the to ICU treatment is uh, 10 days. Clinical year patients are often presented with ARDS, acute cardiac injury and acute uh, renal injury. So it is very important to find the sign of risks early and manage patients early. Besides ultrasound, it is very important to in uh, management of uh, COVID-19. It is the only portable device in world. Uh, it can be used for the diagnosis of pre-existing disease of uh, various systems, especially for elderly patients and the diagnosis of the complications caused by COVID-19 COVID uh, in different, uh, different systems and uh, organs, such as lungs, heart, liver, uh, kidney, and the brain. And it also can be used to uh, evaluate the disease uh, progression, such as uh, uh, monitoring uh, structural and the functional changes, and to guide the treatments, including uh, medication adjustment, uh, therapeutic percutaneous puncture.
Beside every sound is very useful in detecting pre-existing disease in uh, various uh, organs and uh, systems. Every sound has high uh, sensitivity and uh, specificity uh, in, the, uh, in the evaluation of many structure and the functional abnormalities in uh, these systems. Echocardiography is uh, extremely useful in eliminating or confirming uh, cardiovascular disease, such as uh, cardiomyopathy, great vessel disease, uh, valvular disease, and others. Early and accurate uh, identification of this pre-existing disease is vital for the outcomes of treatment. And uh, here uh, are some interesting uh, cases. Uh, this is a case of a 78-year-old male confirmed with uh, COVID-19, also with diabetes and hypertension. After admission, the patient complains of dry cough, uh, dyspnea, and uh, fatigue, and no uh, significant relief uh, is observed after the treatment. The lab findings did not give us enough information about uh, her uh, condition. Uh, his, doctor, uh, his doctors guess that uh, his uh, symptoms may be caused by uh, some structural heart disease. So uh, the physician ordered an uh, ego exam for this patient. The ego showed that uh, his left ventric uh, ventricular sy uh, systolic function is normal. However, uh, he had a severe uh, mitral valve prolapse uh, with moderate insufficiency. The left ventricle and the left atrium uh, were enlarged, as we can see in these videos. ECHO confirmed the existence of MVP, uh, which can be caused cardiac output insufficiency. Then his therapy uh, was adjusted based on the ECHO findings. And a few days later, uh, there is a uh, there was a significant improvement in patient's condition. This case reveals that ACR truly is a vital tool to confirm pre-existing problem of heart. Case two uh, is a 73-year-old male who had a fever for 10 days and uh, he has diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a chest CD uh, image of his, which is a very typical one, suggested pneumonia and the viral uh, pneumonia cannot be exclosed. His neighbor findings suggested an uh, increased level of inflammatory marks. Please notes, notice that the BNP was more than 1,000 and uh, which was far beyond the limit, uh, limit value, uh, indicated a high possibility and of heart failure. So an uh, echo is uh, in need. His echo showed uh, his RV and the RA was significantly enlarged, and there is a diffused weakening of RV wall motion. His ejection fraction was under 32%, and he had a severe aortic valve, uh, valve regurgitation. We can see the echo is vital in figuring out the pre existing problems, heart problems. We will never be easy to get this information without uh, echo. The heart problems of this patient included dilated cardiomyopathy and severe aortic valve regurgitation. After adjustment of medical therapy, the patient's BNT level recovered to normal. 
as we know, nuns as, uh, are the major target of COVID-19, and uh, bad ultrasound is uh, helpful for observing some signs of lung disease. Case three is a 71-year-old male who had a fever for three days. He also had a shortness of breath and a fatigue. There was uh, no significant improvement. Uh, improvement after level uh, fluoxine uh, treatment. His chest CD suggested bilateral limited emphysema and the lab findings suggested viral infection. A bedside lung ultrasound exam was performed, as we can see uh, in, in the videos. This lung echo showed clear L1B lines, which was quite correspondent, correspondent with his condition. Here is another case of the of lung ultrasonography. Uh, this is a uh, uh, this is old, <laughs> nineteen six year, almost one hundred year uh, old uh, female. Uh, she coughed for five days and have a fever for four days with uh, intermittent chest pain. Her CD suggested that she had uh, interstitial pneumonia with. Uh, which may be a sign for viral infection. In her bedside lung artery sound, R1B lines could be clearly observed. Case five uh, is an 80 year old female. Uh, she was tested uh, positive for COVID 19 on RT PCR. Uh, her chest CT suggested by natural uh, patch ground uh, glass opac uh, opacities, pre uh, presence of nodule, uh, nodules of left superior lobe and the right inferior lobe. We also uh, we can also see B lines in both lungs, which was uh, uh, which were coordinated with the chest CT. Case six uh, is a 45-year-old uh, female uh, who had a fe uh, had fever for seven days and a chest pain for one day. Uh, she was admitted to hospital in uh, COVID-19. We know uh, chest pain may appear in uh, COVID-19 patients, but what was the real cause causes of her uh, chest pain? Here are some uh, vital neighbor findings. You can see uh, that the, uh, the demo is uh, 3.3 uh, line, and the troponin is uh, almost one uh, 10,000, uh, and the BNT is uh, 632, which were very dangerous size. So the physician ordered uh, an echo exam. Echo uh, was performed on February uh, 14th, uh, 2020, and it gave us a lot of information. Uh, information. It revealed that the extensive uh, anterior wall uh, myocardial infarction, uh, uh, the apical left ventricular aneurysm with mural thrombosis and uh, decreased uh, left ventricle ejection fraction. Here we can see the thrombo echo uh, on the four chamber view, as well as on the apical shoulder axis view. All of the evidence was telling us that this lady has a myocardial infarction. Then uh, this patient was diagnosed with uh, uh, NCP. AMI and the left ventricular aneurysm with uh, mural thrombosis based on the ACO findings. And uh, ACO guided clinical uh, medication adjustment was applied, including uh, myocardial uh, protection enhanced and uh, limiting uh, liquid input. 
two weeks later, we performed the echo uh, uh, this patient. Again, uh, compared with the pre, uh, previous exam, the scope, uh, the scope of neurothrombosis was enlarged, while the segmental uh, world motion uh, abnormal entity was just similar. Here are the chest images of patient, uh, which indicate the lesion uh, in lungs was absorbed after treatment, uh, according to the uh, echo findings. And now she's at home with her family. Case uh, seven uh, is a 69 year old male uh, who had a fever for 10 days and a chest pain for uh, two days. She, uh, he was admitted to hospital with COVID-19 and ARDS. And we should notice that PE, PE uh, showed mild uh, edema in his lower extremity. Here is the uh, nebo uh, findings. Uh, notice that the uh, edema and the BNT uh, pulmonary uh, embolism cannot be excluded according to the increased uh, edema and uh, her clinical uh, presentations. So uh, bedside ultrasound uh, are recommended uh, recommend to confirm uh, the diagnosis. Ego exam indicated uh, uh, enlarged uh, right heart. We can see the uh, the ventricular septum curved to uh, RV cavity in the four chamber view. Uh, moderate tricuspid regurgitation with uh, estimated seventy four mmHg pulmonary syst uh, systolic pressure. Dilated IVC decreased respiratory collapse rate less than 50% 50, 50 and uh, normal uh, uh, RV motion with uh, uh, normal ejection fraction. Uh, our ultrasound of his lower, uh, lower uh, extremity veins, vein is also performed. As we can see in these two pictures, the 2DE showed uh, Hypo uh, echo, echoic signs in the posterior tibial vein nomen, while the CDFI showed a faint defect in corresponding sites. Case eight is a 68 year old female uh, diagno uh, diagnosed as uh, uh, COVID 19 for 20 days. Her DD demo was above uh, 20. Uh, an ultrasound of the lower extremity veins was performed, and the thrombus uh, in the in the muscular vein, posterior tibial vein, and the iliac vein uh, were found. And this uh, and this pictures show the thrombus in her posterior tibial vein and the iliac vein. So. Uh, Bedside ultrasound is quite helpful in quickly identifying these high risk clinical conditions. Case line uh, is a, a 35 year old male uh, who had a fever for more than 20 days and a shortness of breath for uh, 10 days. Uh, he was tested uh, positive to uh, COVID-19. Uh, his chest CT uh, showed viral pneumonia changes, and our ultrasound uh, ultrasonography indicated pleural effusion. Uh, case 10 is a young girl, uh, uh, just uh, uh, 17 years uh, year old, with a history of uh, accurate leukemia for two years. And one year after uh, hematopoietic stem and cell transplantation, uh, also the COVID-19 uh, positive, uh, beside ultrasound indicates uh, massive uh, acetase. Better ultrasound is a, a very important tool in monitoring 
disease progression. In this case, uh, a 77 year old male was admitted to hospital. Uh, emergency uh, bed ultrasound, a bedside ultrasound was performed and it revealed that the heart was pumping uh, effecting, uh, effectively. However, it just gradually stopped in only two minutes. Uh, with, bed, uh, with bedside echo, we can just directly see what, uh, what is happening uh, inside the patient, patient's body. And it's really useful for doctors to uh, take a quick action. Bedside ultrasound also can guide and assist treatment, such as drug treatment uh, uh, plan and uh, adjustment, uh, guided uh, puncture and uh, customization, uh, bedside minimally invasive surgery, and so on. This case uh, is about use of ultrasound in the uh, process of central venous Customization. The other song is a great tool to guide the procedure. With other song, we, uh, uh, we can directly uh, monitor the location of caster uh, in the former vein and uh, evaluate where uh, it is inserted successfully uh, or not. Here is another case about the use of ultrasound in uh, guiding the implantation of an inferior vena cover uh, filter to prevent fatal uh, pulmonary embolism. This case is a 40 years uh, old male uh, who has admitted to a hospital with, uh, with COVID-19. On the third day after the admission, he complained of left iliac a soreness and a bedside, a bedside ultrasound revealed deep venous thrombus uh, in the left nor limb. So, a procedure of uh, implantation of inferior uh, vena cava filter was conducted on the ultrasound guidance beside bedside. The whole procedure of operation was guided by ultrasound. Uh, these images and the videos showed the location of the guide wire and the field device. Also in the in intensive care unit, uh, bedside ultrasound was used uh, stethoscope uh, uh, that so-called ultrasonic world round. Our team also uh, involved in the uh, post-mortem examination of uh, COVID-19 cases. Ultrasound guided autopsy was performed to acquire samples uh, in uh, different organs for uh, pathology exam. This is a picture showing that our team was conducting uh, or topsy, uh, topsy with ultrasound image. Uh, this is me uh, acquiring the symbol of, uh, of heart with a bedside ultrasound in, uh, in an intensive care unit. By ultrasound guided uh, autopsy, the symbols of lung was acquired. as well as heart, uh, veins, and the spleen, and the kidney, uh, pancreas, uh, liver. Uh, thyroid, uh, testis, esophagus, uh, colon, and so on. Uh, our uh, our, uh, our uh, hospital was uh, in charge of two mobile carbon uh, hospitals. Uh, one of them was the largest uh, in Wuhan. We sent our team uh, to uh, uh, our team to there to screen the severe 
patients from the mild ones. A total of uh, 456 patients was screened by our team. Nearly 10% uh, of them was screened out as severe patient, patients. During the pandemic period, our department did a lot of work for those COVID-19 patients. Uh, till March uh, 11th, 78 uh, doctors from, uh, from our department had been fighting uh, in front line. Uh, a total of 3,792 NCP patients underwent ultrasound exam by our staff. Uh, during uh, this pandemic outbreak, PBE, uh, I want to say PBE is extremely important for uh, global health workers. And in my opinion, wearing a uh, medical mask and keeping hand wash are the most important key steps for personal uh, protection. Keeping a good health state is also important. In our department, uh, it also a rule that our staff have one day off after one day work in uh, intensive care uh, unit. Uh, besides, uh, Ensuring uh, sufficiency steep and drinking a lot of water is also necessary. Uh, that I want to say. <laughs> Thank you uh, for listening, and I also want to uh, like appreciate our team uh, for the hard work and the spirit and uh, self uh, sacrifice. See you. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Xi Mingxin, for his nice presentation and share his incredible experiences. He's a key person, not just working in the front line, but also leading his our 100 ultrasound doctors to fight COVID-19 in Wuhan. Again, we acknowledge you and thanks him and his team in Wuhan Uni Hospital for their dedication and contribution during the anti-coronavirus event in Wuhan. Thank you, thank you, Professor Liu. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Liu Xi, Professor and Director of Department of Ultrasound in Air Force Medical Center in Beijing, who will be speaking about experience of con cardiac pulmonary multi-system ultrasound evaluation in the critical care unit. Dr. Liu Xi, please. All right. Although I didn't work on the first line this time, but I already received re feedbacks that the experience of critical ultrasound be helpful to the COVID-19 ICU work by some colleagues who worked on the front line after my lecture one month ago. So I hope it will be helpful for you because this is a global battle for a shared future. So first, let's look at today's terrible numbers. It's already almost 600,000 confirmed and reported patients in the world. In our experience, one of the key tasks in pandemic prevention and control is to prevent the development of mild patients to severe and the severe patients to critical. How to screen out high-risk patient timely? In the situation of medical resources shortage, 
We need to use all available methods to help doctors and patients. We need direct, effective, and economical methods. Ultrasound is the only imaging machine that can easily move into the ICU and can perform almost general examination for patients. Moreover, in the critical ward, doctors are wearing heavy isolation clothes, goggles, and other equipment, so auscultation and palpation are not possible. If the ICU doctor can do ultrasound examination and understand the image, that would be perfect. But in this special period, almost all doctors from other professions have to fight together. It's unrealistic to learn how to do ultrasound scanning from today. So we can explore a cooperation mode, that is ultrasound doctors or technicians to help clinicians examine patients, provide pro reports and results. Doctors need to know when should I think of applying ultrasound, how to understand the results of ultrasound and how to classify patients and what will be the next treatment. So first, I'd like to introduce two cases and I want to tell you how critical ultrasound works. So the first one is a 40 years male. Uh, he suffered a ruptured dissecting aneurysm of left vertebral artery and the subarachnoid hemorrhage. He was transferred to our ICU ward on the seventh day of onset. We gave him a systematic baseline assessment. Cervical vascular ultrasound showed the spectrum Doppler wave of the left vertebral artery with a small shock wave uh, with low velocity, which means that the, dis uh, the distal segment of the artery was occluded. He had an aneurysm embolization after the attack. Transcranial color Doppler showed a low flow middle artery, uh, cerebral artery, and a compensate flow waveform of posterior cerebral artery. And we had an uh, echocardiogram showed normal. By that time, the left atrium is 32 millimeter. The IVC a diameter, lower limbs, and the uh, liver, kidneys looks all normal. There was, uh, there was no thrombosis in, in the lower limb. But on the 16th days, the condition suddenly changed. Blood tests showed the signs of infection and the brain natriuretic peptide is very high. So we gave him an echocardiogram. So this time the left atrium enlarged to 39 millimeter. Doppler indexes reflecting diastolic function also indicate the increase of left atrium, uh, left atrial filling pressure. The diameter of inferior vena cava was enlarged and the respiratory variability was decreased. Compared with the baseline and under the hypothermia protection state at that time, the flow rate of cerebral blood flow increased obviously. So we gave him a lung scanning. There is a broad beeline in the anterior region of the chest, which is not found in the basic stick scanning. This sign indicates that the patient has pulmonary edema and the consolidation area in the posterior region is larger than that in the basic state. Then they gave him bronchoscope, um, aspiration and flushing. After that, the consolidation area shrinked. We may see that there are more air hyperechoic field inside, which means uh, more air expands, expands the occluded branches. The lavage fluid was cultured and found to have bacterial infection. Then he was treated with antibacterial therapy and the strict fluid management. Negative balance was used and, as, and uh, observed in the following days. Then echocardiogram again, Left atrium size uh, decreased and the parameters of diastolic function also improved. The diameter and the respiratory variability of IVC was better and the middle cerebral artery blood flow recovery. The broad B line of the thoracic region gradually decreased and disappeared. 
The X-ray also confirmed this improvement. The application of ultrasound can reduce the radiation exposure. So the second case is a 60 years old female found unable to speak, left limb dysfunction for 17 hours. Multiple images confirmed that she suffered from intracranial vascular embolism. On the third day after admission, she suddenly had a, de a decrease in the oxygen saturation. We gave him a quick lung scanning and found that there were multiple consolidation areas in her lung field, but her chest city was normal the day before. Then echocardiography indicates abnormal right ventricular wall motion. Pulmonary artery spectrum indicates pulmonary hypertension. Combined with her history, we wondered if she had pulmonary embolism. Then we turned to her lower extremities to look at the femoral vein, and then we did find thrombosis in it. The patient took another CT scan to confirm the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. This is the CT scan within two days before and after. So from the above two cases, we can understand that ultrasound image plays the role of doctor's eyes and ears in, in critical unit, which is more faithful to uh, than your stethoscope. In this special time, many ultrasound doctors and technicians may enter the intensive care unit to help work. In my country, they do. Just like uh, our honorable professor Xie Mingxing, who just spoke and to show us so many excellent cases. And uh, ultrasound has proved to be very helpful. We can explain the meaning of parameters to clinicians. What we need to pay attention to is that entering the ICU is different from we usually scan the patients. We need to pay attention to something. There's three conceptual preparation for critical ultrasound is systematic target efficiency. So what kind of machine should we use? Of course, the portable one is the best. In this pandemic, Chinese experts also tried remote ultrasound, which is an amazing technology. The following two doctors will explain it in detail. So let's start with the machine. It's better to have three conventional probes for critical units, including the cardiac phase every probe, abdominal convex every probe, high frequency linear, error probe, and if there is a high frequency convex arrow scanning, that would be perfect for pediatric patients and deep vessels. And there are some operating principles in ICU. So first, convenient probe switching and the preset conditions in advance, that is very important to save time. And there should be enough memory for image store. And when we have scanning, reduce posture transformation of patients and maximize the examination in one position. It's also saving time and reduce the exposure risk. The most important thing is we should uh, be concerned about target guided. We need no know, uh, basic knowledge of the patients, including the medical history, present conditions, what clinicians cares about most. Of course, for a COVID-19 patients, we need to read the CT scan reports first. And we need no basic parameters knowledge, common indicators of monitoring instruments. At least you need to know the basic vital signs of the patients at that time. So it's unrealistic to learn echocardiography from scratch in a short period of time. So I won't introduce how to do echo uh, echocardiography in detail because of the time. So this part of work must be done by qualified doctors or technicians, for example, by ARDMS. So the key contents of echocardiography for COVID-19 patients include, uh, we need to screen the basic disease, especially for the abnormal structure and the evaluation of heart function, evaluation of blood volume assessment, Here's some tips. Pay attention to the measurement of chamber size, leave traces every time, uh, every time, because the combination of atrial ventricular chamber size 
uh, cardiac function and blood biochemical indexes such as myocardial enzymes is the key guiding data for later treatment. And we need notice there's many characteristic heart disease of patients in ICU. Um, for example, the characteristic ventricular dysfunction and abnormal hemodynamic response due to stress cardiomyopathy, explosive myocarditis and septic shock under the conditions of infection, trauma, and stroke. Dr. Xi already gave us many cases, excellent cases of this, time, of this situation. Do not ignore a diastolic heart failure with normal systolic function. Patients with ventilator are prone to occur. Please pay attention to atrial size. Parameters related, related to diastolic function, indicator of in, uh, IVC and the B-line distribution and density. And uh, here's more uh, tips for the um, measurement of IVC. There's many traps in measurement and evaluation of IVC. The first one is position. Supine position, we should note that many patients' waist and abdomen are padded with, uh, with pad, and raising the head of the bed will affect the measurement. Measurement should be done in the fully supine position. Uh, second, the measurement reference point should be fixed and uh, um, in the constant section. The measurement method is different with or without ventilator. It's very important for beginners to know that. And plural effusion and the assets will affect the interpretation of the results. And medium to large tricuspid regurgitation will affect the results too. I would like to introduce lung ultrasound. Many ultrasound workers have never contacted or pay attention to lung ultrasound before the pandemic. In fact, lung ultrasound is very useful. It's easy for a sonographer to understand and learn. So the sketch of body surface projection can help us to better understand the, uh, the lung lobes corresponding to the ultrasonic image area. According to the per, uh, parasternal line, the anterior axillary line, the posterior axillary line, and the spinal paraspinal line, uh, we divided the lung field into 12 areas as shown in the figure. And um, on the left, uh, on the left fig figure, we may see the plural line. The plural line is a line near reflection formed by the interface echo between pleura and lung surface, which is smooth and uniform in normal condition. It is sliding uh, with the breath. The thickness is less than 0.5 millimeter. So this is the longitudinal section parallel to the intercostal space. The right picture is the section obtained perpendicular to the intercostal space. In this picture, we may see the A line. A line is uh, the bright lines that are um, equidistant from the skin to the pleural line. So A line is parallel and equidistant to pleural line. So from the picture, we may see the strong echo of the rib and the sound shadow behind it which makes the plural line seems to be interrupt. We can judge the continuity of the plural line according to the breath. If we use convex every probe for the scanning, the normal image is as follows. Between the strong echo of two ribs represented by the yellow line and the sound shadow behind it, there is the A line parallel to the plural line, like this. So this sign looks like a bat. We call it a bat sign. I know many people hate that. B line is a hyperechoic line that originates from the pleural line and is perpendicular to the pleural line and radiates to the deep part of the lung field. The imaging mechanism of echo generation is similar to cometal sign. It is still controversial. The appearance of V line indicates a change of water content in alveolar interstitium, the decrease of air content. 
As shown in the figure below, the density of line of B line reflects the degree of water content, which can be caused by liquid exudation and the leakage. This kind of change can be local, localized like uh, the left upper figure or spread many fields like the right one and the left upper, uh, left lower one, or as dense and indistinguishable as the uh, right lower one. We call it a white lung. When the disease developed further, the gas in the alveolar is filled with liquid, which leads to pulmonary consol consolidation. If the lesion reached the pleura, the ultrasound can detect the uh, detect the, the image and the substantial echo like liver and the spleen in the thoracic cavity. The consolidated tissue can be vibrated by the heartbeat to produce a slight pulsation we call the pulmonary pulsation. And in the consolidation tissue, you may also see some more uh, air hyper echo in the branchial that has not been absorbed, uh, the red arrow show. So there's many uh, clinical application of lung ultrasound, including the COVID-19, but due to the time limit, I will only introduce the change of, cardio, of cardiogenic pulmonary edema and the manifestation of pneumonia today. So in the original normal area, especially in uh, area one and two of the chest, such as if you can see uh, uh, such white Bead line suddenly appeared, you need to suspect whether there is a uh, pulmonary edema. Then the next step is to check the parameters of echocardiography and the IVC diameter and the respiratory variability. Combined with the patient's medical history and blood biochemical indicators, we can quickly make a judgment on whether there is a cardiogenic uh, a pulmonary edema. The sonographic appearance of pneumonia is in the infected area. See, um, the second interrupted pleural line could be fine, and the A line disappeared. The different degree of B line means the different alveolar interstitial syndrome in different degrees. When the lesion is more serious, the consolidation area could be seen. The consolidation has no distribution characteristics in acute stage of pneumonia, but it has obvious gravity in the uh, dependent distribution characteristics in long-term bad rhythm patients and uh, in ICU or in ARDS patients. That is the consolidation changes in the posterior and the lower lobe of the lungs. So, and uh, there may different amount of pleural effusion could be seen according to the degree of the disease. So what will the, uh, what will the COVID-19 patient's lung look like? I'm very grateful to my friend, Dr. Huang Yi from Xi'an Chest Hospital, who provide me with the following pictures and cases from the front line. This is a picture of Dr. Huang working in the isolation ward. So in the early stage, a uh, CT scan showed a typical patchy and large ground glass-like shadows, and many of the lesions go directly to the subpleural. So this character gave ultrasound chance to image. The ultrasonography showed the thickened, interrupted a pleural line, and on the affected focus, A line disappeared, B line in different dense could be found in this fusion mode. We call it waterfall sign or diffuse distribution mode. We call it white lung sign. Compared with the B line caused by cardiogenic pulmonary edema, the B line fusion in patients with COVID-19 is more common and, the, um, and relatively fixed. The B line edge is more fuzzy and has no bifurcation sign. And the starting point is blunt. In the advanced stage, more consolidation areas could be found, except for those uh, with edema. And the size of the con consolidation area is related to the disease condition and the distribution gra gra gradually show as the characteristics of gravity dependence 
just like ARDS. In the recovery period, we may see the reduction of consolidation area and the B-line density and the distribution. It has been proved that the ventilation in the prone position is helpful for the recovery of COVID-19 pneumonia and ultrasound can help to observe the effect in this treatment. And I want to focus and emphasize some limitations of ultrasound in the uh, diagnosis of lung diseases. So there's limited value in particular sites and mild conditions. So let's see the, uh, let's see the right picture. When the, when, the, when, when the focus, when the disease reached to the a plural, then ultrasound can image. But if, if the uh, focus is on the, in the middle of the lung, ultrasound cannot image on that part. So there's limited specificity of some diseases. We need combine more clinical uh, proof. Obesity, subcutaneous emphysema causes serious sound attenuation. Scapular and the rib, large dressing cover, may block the lung field so that it cannot be imaged. And positioning and the quantitative evaluation depends on experience and the cooperation. And sometimes knowledge and experience of the operator may affect the accuracy of the results. This is the template I designed specifically uh, for ICU in our center. Some hospitals in pandas and pandemic areas think it's useful for reference. So I'd like to share it and translate it in English if it may help you. It's easy to use. Just tick and fill in the numbers, deliver the report on the spot, saving time and effort. In fact, in the critical unit of new needs and uh, pediatrics, Ultrasound, including lung ultrasound, is more meaningful and dependent on than adults. However, I will not introduce it today because of the time limit. I just want you to understand that ultrasound is a very useful tool. In many cases, you can turn to ultrasound for help. Because of the characteristic of newborns, ultrasound imaging will be easier and clearer. With the linear uh, area probe, you can scan the whole lung area of a baby. Or with a high-frequency microconvex probe, you can check the brain, heart, and lung at one time and make a comprehensive evaluation. So in ICU, especially in the current situation, the most important task of ultrasonography are multiple combined, combined assessment. We need a quick scanning and make sure and make the reports comprehensive. And we need experience in ultrasound diagnosis and clinical basis. Scanning speed should be fast and saving more images uh, as, as, as many as needed for later analysis and the follow-up study. Pay attention to the traps and evaluate the parameters objectively. And uh, there should be reasonable interval of re-examination. Some situations like cardiogenic pulmonary edema, intracranial hypertension, or other fatal and important situations, uh, we, we could uh, think of the re-examination as needed, but only for pneumonia, especially in adults, should be reasonable. That means we should take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself. And finally, I would end my lecture with my daughter's um, painting. I want to tell you how Chinese medical workers protect and care for their patients. In order to put on and take off protective clothing more conveniently and quickly, many, uh, many women medical workers cut their hairs. They are so brave, so excellent. My daughters were deeply moved and created this painting for the great Chinese medical workers. I pay my highest respect to all the workers, all the medical workers, who rushed to the front line of the pandemic area. So I hope our experience be helpful. I hope everyone and your families, relatives, friends to stay well. 
I believe United is one. We will preview this battle. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Liu Xi, for giving a comprehensive lecture on cardio pulmonary ultrasound for SEO applications. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Xu Huixiong, Professor and Director of Ultrasound Research and Education Institute, the 10th People's Hospital of Tongdi University in Shanghai, who will speak about tele-ultrasound for the COVID-19 pandemic, the Chinese experience. So please, Dr. Xu. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, Professor Che Che for your introduction. And uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Xu from Shanghai, uh, China. I'm an ultrasound doctor. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the organization committee for organizing such an important uh, webinar. And uh, for those who suffered and who uh, are suffering from this pandemic, I would like to, I hope that my topic would be helpful for your uh, practice. Today, uh, I would like to give a topic about tele for COVID-19 pandemic and the Chinese experience. First, uh, background. As we all know, the spread of COVID-19 around the world is accelerated, and the number of deaths is rising continuously. And we can see that uh, most of the deaths uh, is, uh, are from Italy, Spain, China, Iran, and France. The COVID-19 death rate varies greatly and uh, from this figure, we can see that uh, uh, in uh, the center of this pandemic, uh, China, China, Chinese Wuhan, the death rate is uh, as high as uh, 12%. However, outside Wuhan, the other cities in China, the uh, death rate was about 0.25%. And in other countries such as Singapore and South Korea, the death rate, the death rate was slow. However, in Italy and uh, Spain, uh, death rates are high. The higher values uh, could be more appropriate in resource poor settings where the quality of hospital and intensive care might be constrained. And then higher values might also be appropriate in high income countries with limited surge capacity in hospital service because elevated case fatality risk could be seen at the peak of local epidemics. The varying death rates may, might be related to the infection rate of medical workers and nearly 10,000 medical workers have been infected with COVID-19 in Spain. And in Italy, uh, the numbers uh, were as more than 6,000, which accounts for, account for nearly 10% of the total infected population. In those countries with high infection rate are from medical workers, high death, death rate for COVID-19 patients are expected. The infection of medical workers will cause terrible collapse of the health care, health care system. It will lead to cross infection, uh, which means more patients will be infected. So several organizations in Italy appear that uh, their high priority is to protect the healthcare workers because of the shortage of personal protective equipment, such as masks, goggles, and isolation goals for workers on the front line and the medical workers are overworked and exhausted.
and such a background, the use of telemedicine surgeons and surgeons, which will reduce their doctor entering the isolation unit, avoid excessive use of personal protective equipment, and uh, accumulate knowledge of specialists in different areas from different uh, locations. tele is a very important part of telemedicine. It is a technique which allows interpretation of ultrasound images ob obtained by healthcare providers or untrained care providers located at a distance from a qualified center. And the last, providing diagnostic and imaging service to patients from remote areas. In general, tele includes three components. The first is the remote station. You can see at the left figure, a doctor located a distance from a qualified center is performing ultrasound examination. And the second component is a cl the cloud infra infrastructure and uh, Wi-Fi. And the third component is the export station. So why we need tele and mobile ultrasound in the fight against epidemics? There are three major factors. The first factor is the population we faced, which uh, who are uh, always critical year patients, and there is a high demand for medical resources. The second is the scenario. The scenario is the isolation ward and the cabin hospital. So there is a need for remote guide, guided bedside inspection. And the third is the equipment. Portable ultrasound is the only imaging, imaging devices in the isolation ward. And we need data, uh, data, data transmission in mobile environment. With the help of tele sound, even the personnel and equipment are is isolated. The data is not isolated. So tele and the mobile sound become important application scenarios in the fight against epidemics, especially for the first time medical staff cannot wear a stethoscope because they are wearing protective clothing. And ultrasound has become the most convenient cardiopulmonary scan tool for critical patients. The COVID-19 is regarded as the class B infectious disease. And it should, it should be managed as a class A infectious disease. For this kind of disease, isolation is the best provision. The left figures show the intensive physicians identify, uh, the left figures show the doctors identified critical year patients in time in a cabin hospital using bedside ultrasound. And the right figures show the interventional procedures and ultrasound guidance in the isolation unit. The use, the usefulness of tele and mobile ultrasound in the fight against epidemics has been endorsed by Chinese ultrasound societies. The Chinese Medical Association Ultrasound Medicine Branch released two guidelines about the use of ultrasound. The first is pulmonary ultrasonography and tele ultrasound of COVID-19. And the second is bedside echocardiography and tele ultrasound of COVID-19. The National Health Commission also released a, a manual for ultrasound use in fight against the epidemics. And the consensus was also released 
by the National Health Commission. So how does tele ultrasound work? According to the data source, tele ultrasound can be classified into two types. The first is the video relay system based on uh, common video format. And then the second is the tele ultrasound system based on DICOM format transmission. And currently, uh, most uh, used uh, tele ultrasound systems are type one. And according to the operation mode, tele te uh, tele ultrasound can be classified into synchro synchronous mode. The data is acquired and transmitted in real time to a remote expert, while examination is performed at a local healthcare provider. This mode leaves good communication facilities, as well as expensive and complex technology with sophisticated equipment. And the other is a, a, a synchronous mode. It consists of collecting and storing images or reduced video data by the local healthcare provider and forward them to a specialist for interpre interpretation. And in China, uh, most of the place use the, the, the first type, the synchronous mode. The recent technical advances boost the use of tele ultrasound, such as 5G, a robot, and handheld ultrasound. In China, there are currently two types of 5G tele ultrasound systems are used. The left side shows the building type. The 5G component is integrated into uh, in the ultrasound machine. And the right side is the universal type. The 5G component is uh, independent of the ultrasound machine. It can be, it, it is suitable for any ultrasound machine. This is, this is a platform arch architecture of uh, a 5G tele uh, 5G tele ultrasound system. It is a cloud-based data transmission and management mode. We can see that many ultrasound machines can connect to a cloud through the data box, and then the data are saved. Uh, 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 stored in the server by mobile, PC, and the pad, real-time interaction, and the data, uh, DICOM data store, story can be, can be carried out from a remote area. This is the workflow of bedside ultrasound for COVID-19 patients a tele ultrasound solution. When the patient in the isolation unit lead ultrasound, the nurse will call ultrasound support, supporting. At this time, the intensive physician who is in the isolation unit can perform ultrasound examination quickly with the help of the tele ultrasound system. And after the examination, the intensive physician can return to work and life immediately. That is a very quickly and rapid response. However, for the tradition solution, when the patient needs ultrasound examination, first the nurse will call the ultrasound supporting. The, doc the doc ultrasound doctor has to head to ICU and then take on the isolation goal and then perform ultrasound examination and then take off the isolation goal. And, and, and most importantly, the ultrasound doctor have to be quarantined, quarantined for 14 days after the examination, which is a, a great waste for uh, 
medical resources. The tele ultrasound system strongly supports the bedside ultrasound. This is a million to one more. By using the tele ultrasound system, the MDT mode for one for one for the patient in the isolation unit could be carried out. The doctors can be a physician, can be surgeon, or can be intensive intensive physician which will provide high level healthcare and reduce the risk of uh, doctors exposure to COVID-19. And this is another mode, one too many mode. One expert team from a remote area can deal with multiple, uh, multiple scenario. For example, the ICU, the operation room, emergence of community hospitals, which greatly reduce the cost of specialist resource and reduce the risk of exposure to COVID-19. And this is another one to many mode. One expert team did this with multi, multi per sonographers which will also re reduce the cost of specialists and the PPE resource and the risk of exposure to the COVID-19. This is a key hardware for the universal type of tele system. It's very simple. It includes three components, data box, camera, and an earphone. And this is a remote expert PC station uh, operation interface. You can see that this is a one to many mode. The expert at the remote area can see a different scenarios from different places and different scenarios. And this is a remote expert mobile phone station, operation interface. We can freely change the screen and the data can be retrieved in a DICOM format. And we can also perform some uh, measurement. The image quality is, is high without loss. The second uh, 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 applications, the use of tele during the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic uh, according to the public report. So, uh, Mainly three provinces or cities are involved. First is uh, Zhejiang province, and the second is Sichuan province, and the other is Shanghai. We have deployed uh, several universal types of tele systems in Wuhan during the pandemic, including several hospitals such as Huashengshan Hospital, Leishengshan Hospital. This is an application scenario, many to one mode. Many means the uh, remote general ultrasound doctor, acro doctor, and one means the ICU physician in the isolation unit. Uh, intensive physician has, has no idea about ultrasound. However, with the help of the 
arts and doctors from Shanghai, the physicians can perform echocardiograph successfully. This is another scenario. It's also a many to one mode. In this mode, the, re the remote general ultrasound doctors and the intervention ultrasound doctors from uh, different hospitals teach the inter uh, uh, intensive physician how to perform intervention ultrasound inside, inside the, uh, in, in the isolation unit. And they found a patient uh, with hydrothorax in right chest. And uh, uh, the doctors in isolation unit successfully perform fluid drainage for this patient. So the advantage is that it can avoid extra exposure to COVID-19 for doctors, avoid unnecessary transportation for patients and the rapid response for emer emergent situations. And also it gave uh, more confidence and uh, uh, led higher success rate for interventional procedures in isolation unit. The, ro uh, the robot art center uh, is also carried out in China. This is the uh, uh, Remote ultrasound doctors perform uh, scanning, and this is the robot in the isolation unit is performing ultrasound examination. It can manipulate by the remote ultrasound doctors. We will show you some cases. This uh, is a ultrasound live doctor in isolation world successfully detect the. B line with tele ultrasound existence. The patient had a pulmonary edema due to COVID 19 infection. And the intensive physician successfully detected a B line with the blue, uh, uh, with the blue protocol. This procedure was instructed by three doctors from different areas. Two, uh, uh, one is from the Shanghai Tense People's Hospital, another is from Shanghai Zhongshan Hospital, and uh, the third one is from Shanghai Pulmonary Hospital. They have different uh, experience, uh, different, uh, uh, experience in uh, interventional ultrasound, echocardiography, and uh, uh, lung examination. And this is uh, case two. This case uh, shows uh, tele ultrasound aided rapid and precise vein catheterization continuous renal replacement therapy. The tele ultrasound aid uh, interventional ultrasound uh, Interventional ultrasound procedures. The intensive physician successfully placed the castor in the cervical vein of the patient and the help of the two ultrasound doctors from Wuhan and Shanghai. It's, it's very important uh, because the patient had uh, elevated serine creatinine level. And the third case shows that tele, uh, tele ultrasound quickly identified the cause of a sudden decline of oxygen saturation and facilitated the subsequent treatment. This is a 18 years old man. His oxygen saturation suddenly declined to 8% in five minutes. So the intensive physician in their isolation unit use ultrasound to identify the possible causes. 
and they found that the left ventricular systolic function is 35 percent, and the right high, right chest hydrothorax is as high as 1,000 millimeters. So the fluid drainage was quickly performed. And after the procedure, the oxygen saturation soon increased to 96%. Uh, in summary, Kelly Ashton has been increasingly applied in the isolation world in combating COVID-19 in China. Kelly Ashton has substantial benefit, such as avoiding extra exposure to the virus reducing unnecessary patient transportation, rapid response to critical condition, and safe personal protective equipment, and so on. Teddy Ashton provide high quality healthcare for COVID-19 patients in resource poor settings, or with limited surge capacity. Thank you very much for your attention. Stay safe and I wish you all peace. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Xu, for the wonderful lecture. We all find that uh, the tele ultrasound is very helpful and useful for the pandemic of COVID-19. Now we are going to introduce the last speaker, Dr. Lu Fa Qin, Professor and Director of PLA Hainan Hospital in Hainan Province, China. Her lecture is titled Application of Remote Ultrasound in Critically Ill Patients with COVID-19. So Dr. Lu, please. Thanks, Professor Fee. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Li Fa Qin. I'm from the ultrasound department of PLA General Hospital in China. Today, I'm going to talk about the application of remote ultrasound for uh, critically ill COVID-19 patients. First, I want to introduce a little bit about remote ultrasound. My name, two ends uh, of remote ultrasound, the patient, ultrasound, uh, patient side and the doctor side. Patient side is where the patient is uh, located. It can be a hospital in a different city. It can be a, a isolation world in the same hospital as the doctor side. On the doctor side, there is usually an experienced ultrasound doctor. They will perform or guide the remote ultrasound. In COVID-19, we used remote ultrasound uh, in some difficult situations. When there are no available uh, doctors on the patient side. When there is a doctor, but the doctor does not have ultrasound experience. And when there is less experienced junior ultrasound doctor on the patient side. Now I'm going to talk about specific patients we had in these situations. The first care here is a male patient, 75 years old. He was a, a suspected case of COVID-19. He was coughing for four days 
before admitted into a hospital in Zhejiang province in China. The patient was in an isolation ward. On the patient side, there is an ultrasound device with a robotic arm and this. The doctor size is in Hainan province, where two ultrasound doctors uh, performed lung examination by controlling the robotic arm through 5G network. The distance between the two places is about uh, 1700 kilometers. For this patient, the ultra ima ultrasound image here shows the lower right of anterior region, you can see rough and thinking the localized pleura, also the lines increased. That should mean uh, the corresponding videos. For the same time, for the same patients at the lower right of posterior region, okay, we can also see rough and thinking the localized pleura from the uh, ultrasound image. B lines also increased. This is a small atelectasis. And this, let me show the video here. The CT image of this patient shows that there are irregular stripes at the right lung near pleura. Patch density increased. And there are consolidated Consolidation shadows. Here is another case that we performed ultrasound with robotic arm. A male patient, 75 years old, he was coughing and had short breath for a week before he was admitted into a hospital in Zhejiang province. At the lower right, at the lower right of the posterior region of uh, this patient, we see rough, local, like the uh, pleura, B lines increased, and there is pleural fusion. CT image show pleural effusion as well. Patient density increased. There is consolidation shadows away from the uh, pleura. The ultrasound and CT image of this patient does not have the typical features of a uh, COVID-19 patient. He was uh, diagnosed with conventional pneumonia. We just talked about uh, using robot arm to, for, to uh, perform ultrasound remotely when there is no available doctors at the patient side. Sometimes the uh, doctors on the uh, patient side, but they don't have experience with uh, ultrasound. For example, this female patient, 53 years old, 
she is a suspected case of COVID-19. She had fever and was coughing for seven days. She was admitted into an isolation ICU at our hospital in Hainan province. Because of septic shock. On the patient's side, there was ICU doctor who does not have any ultrasound experience. On the doctor's side, an experienced ultrasound doctor at her office in the same hospital guided the ICU doctor using remote ultrasound. You can see in these pictures, both doctors were uh, communicating during the process. Here is uh, uh, the ultrasound of this patient on the first day in any uh, hospital on both lungs. There is diffuse distribution of uh, abyssal lines and overlapping abyssal lines. A lines decreased and lung sliding size weakened. On CT, there are multiple small patch shadows. We can also see multiple guiding glass shadows and deep shadows. On the second day, in addition to the ultrasound feature we found on the first day, There are multiple uh, atelectasis area near Plora. Let me show the video uh, here again. On the fourth day from ultrasound on both lungs, B lines decreased and there's less overlapping. And we started seeing B7 lines. The posterior lower regions was the most uh, severe before. We started seeing improvement uh, in these regions as well. On CT, the small patch shadows Decreased. Grinding glass shadows and dipping shadows also decreased. On the eighth day, let's look at the posterior lower regions of his patient. There have been her uh, most severe regions. On the ultrasound images, these lines disappeared. There are still some B7 lines, A lines appeared. On the same day, CT showed that small patch sh shadows continued to decrease. Grinding glass shadows and dipping shadows also continued to decrease. On the 10th day, this patient continued to improve. At the posterior lower regions, we still see B7 lines, but occasionally there is a located thinking uh, uh, pleura. On the same day, 
CT image showed some skirted grinding uh, glass shadows on the lower posterior regions, but much less than before. On the 24th day, the patient is almost recovered. We could see a clear A lines and long sliding signs from ultrasound. On CT, the affected layers mostly disappeared. For this patient, ultrasound was all performed by an IC doctor in the isolation unit with the guidance of an uh, uh, experienced ultrasound doctor remotely. remotely. Here is another case. This is a female patient who is 67 years old. She had fever and was coughing when she was diagnosed with COVID-19 and admitted into a hospital in Hubei province. There was a junior ultrasound doctor in the isolation ICU. She performed a pulmonary examination with the guidance of a doctor in Hainan province through remote ultrasound. This was the uh, one image we got from the examination. There was a significant increase and overlapping for B3 lines. Also rough and localized uh, thinking pleura. And this. In addition to a long image, we also used uh, remote ultrasound in uh, evaluating complications and other diseases. Uh, such as the heart, uh, including uh, ventricular function, a segmental wall motion, and pulmonary arterial pressure, volume assessment, extremity thrombosis, liver and kidney, interventional ultrasound, and so on. In summary, remote ultrasound has helped us in the following situations. When there, uh, there are no available doctors on patient's side, when there is a doctor, but the doctor uh, does not have ultrasound experience, and when there is a less experienced junior ultrasound doctor on the patient side. We think remote ultrasound can be used in the uh, diagnosis of COVID-19 in conjunction with uh, um, PCR and CT and evaluating lung infection caused by uh, COVID-19. And also in assessing complications and other diseases in COVID-19. For more uh, information, there is the Chinese uh, expert consensus on uh, critical art, uh, ultrasound. application for patients with COVID-19. Please take a look. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lu Fa Qing for a nice presentation. 
to conclude our webinar. We wish to once again thank all our speakers and everyone who has attended virtually. This webinar will be available for watching online later. As extension of this webinar, the AUDT Journal in English will be publishing a special issue for COVID-19 with invited editors for this publication. We, in, we welcome and encourage you to submit paper related to this topic from our international ultrasound community. Most importantly, we want to conclude by expressing our appreciation and gratitude to all of our frontline ultrasound physician and the medical staff around the world for their dedication, hard work, and contribution during this time. So that marked the end of this webinar. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Professor Liu. Thank you. Professor Tsai and Yu and Liu. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good, Good night. night. You did a great job. Take Thank care. you so much. Take care.